video, we'll be going over the process of calibrating your Scrambler Champion Kit. The list of materials and access to all other guides and helpful diagrams can be found on our website under the kit instructions page, which is linked in the description below. Alright, so the first thing we are going to do is we are going to be going over how the braking system for the Scrambler works. With the decelerating piece fully engaged and the wing nut fully engaged on the brake, we can slide off that decelerating piece and do, a couple, do one rotation. So what this will do is now, let's say we add on a bunch of uh, rotations like we're setting up for a target distance. Essentially, this the center brake piece will engage on its braking point before the wing nut engages. And for that little bit of extra rotations, that uh, brake piece will actually wrap the fishing line connected to the elastic tubing uh, that we, we attach to the chassis uh, in the build video. And that process of wrapping this fishing line and pulling that latex tubing acts as a very good decelerator uh, for the scrambler. Um, and you know, obviously, the longer, uh, uh, the larger that offset is between when that brake piece engages and when the wing nut engages, will obviously affect you know the degree to braking or how fast your vehicle brakes. Next thing to do here is to adjust the steering of your vehicle. And to do so, we're just going to be uh, loosening the bolts that hold the adjustment arms on the chassis with a screwdriver. And then we can either you know, twist that axis so it's angled to the right or angled to the left. Now, uh, for our launcher, we want, uh, the way we set it up in that launcher build video, we actually want our car to turn to the right. So I'm going to angle uh, my launcher so that the uh, left wheel is a little bit more forward than the right wheel. The next thing to do here is we are going to make the launcher string. So this is the string that connects to both the weight block and that little hook piece uh, of carbon fiber on the back axle. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're just going to make a really big knot. What this knot is going to do is this knot is going to uh, latch on to that uh, you know, vertical piece of carbon fiber on the back axle 3D printed part. And then we're going to key, use that other end of string to make a, a, a small, new, small loop to attach the weight block. So again, we're just making a decently big knot. doesn't matter what size that knot is and it doesn't have to be very big either. So now to make the rest of the string here, we're first going to insert our vehicle into the launcher, and then we're going to hook on our loop that we just made on over that carbon fiber attachment piece on the back axle and we're going to pull it up to that front pulley. And now with that string hooked onto the front pulley, we can pull that string, uh, the still the, the same launcher string, all the way up to our top pulley. So now with that string all the way up to our top pulley, we can go ahead and cut off a, a decent end of it, decent length of it. Uh, but now what we're going to do is we're just going to make a really small knot that can hook on to that central eye screw on our weight block. Now, unlike with the uh, large loop we made, there is a little bit of an advantage to making a much smaller loop. The reason for that is that if you have a really big loop, it is easy for this loop to sort of slip out of that central eye screw. Uh, so making your knot not overly small, uh, but also not too large so that it slips out, will save you a lot of headaches both during testing at home and at the competition. You also want to keep in mind that you want this string, the length of this string, to be as short as possible. And the reason you want it to be as short as possible is uh, so that you can fully maximize the potential energy of the uh, of the falling mass, you know, falling from its full height. If you have a longer string, that weight block will only start pulling the string as it's further down, you know, its descent. Uh, so you want to maximize uh, the 
or sorry, you want to minimize the length of the string so you can maximize the power you're actually getting out of that weight block for speed. With that loop made, we can go ahead and make sure they're within the two V-groove bearings and push it down the slot on that second V-groove bearing. And now we can take off our scrambler or a scrambler vehicle from the launcher and pull the string all the way down and hook it onto our central eye hook. Again, you want to hook it onto the central eye hook, not the larger one on the left. So to attach the weight block, the first thing we need to do is we just need to remove that back three inch long bolt. And now we can slide our weight block onto the guide rod. When doing this, you want to make sure that your uh, launcher string doesn't get tangled around the guide rod. And with our weight block attached, we can now reattach that back three inch long bolt to the top pulley. And again, this bolt really just prevents that rod from coming out of place. All right, so now we can pull our weight block all the way up to the, to the top and make sure that our pencil uh, release mechanism is working. Uh, so basically we're just pushing to push our pencil through that central hole and that pencil also goes through that uh, goes through that eye hook on the left of that weight block middle 3D printed part. And with the weight block on you just want to make sure that the strings are in the V-groove bearings. So with our launcher set up we can go ahead and set our rotations for our vehicle. Now keep in mind that you know, each rotation of this wheel is about 23 to 24 centimeters of total distance. Uh, now, for your brake, you know, if this is your first run, uh, a decent starting point for that brake is to offset it by one full rotation or two full rotations from when that wing nut hits its final brake. Uh, you can do a quick calculation of, you know, what rotation should approximately be. Uh, by dividing the uh, target distance by, uh, you know, let's say 24, even though that isn't, you know, obviously that isn't the uh, you know, actual target distance, but if it, you know, if it is your first run, uh, that is a decent starting point for that. All right, so now with our launcher set up and our rotation set, we can go ahead and uh, place our vehicle in the launcher. When you're doing this, you want to make sure that your rotations don't get messed up. And here you can see they, they did a little bit for me, so I had to make sure that uh, my rotations were set properly um, when putting them in. So now we're going to go ahead and aim our launcher. The first thing you want to do, especially if this is just your first run, uh, so your first time testing rather, you want to go ahead and set up your target block. Now a target block, like what you're seeing here, is just you know something you can stand up at the target distance that you could aim towards. Uh, now here this target block is just made out of two pieces of wood that have been screwed together and there's a line in the middle of that that I'm aiming towards. You can use like a cardboard box or really anything that you can stand up at that target distance. Uh, so if you're first time testing and you have no idea where to put this aiming block, uh, a great spot is to offset it, you know, 20 centimeters to the right or 20 centimeters to the left, or you could even place it directly at the center uh, of that target distance. You also want to make sure that the tip of your guide rail is at the starting point. And now we can look through our scope to aim to our uh, target block. Uh, now again, when you're doing this, you want to make sure that that you know, that guide rail tip is still at the starting point. Um, and also, after you're done aiming, you want to pull off the scope. Uh, the reason you need to pull off the scope is that with the scope attached, the launcher is or can be uh, wider than the 50 centimeter limit. So as long as you remove the scope before you uh, start to run your vehicle, you should be good to go. All right, so when you're running your vehicle, you want to take note of how it actually breaks. You know, breaking like this is actually good, uh, but you don't want to see something like this. This process that you're going to see here, this recoiling, uh, is actually caused when the wing nut has not been able to engage fully uh, to its you know, stopping point. And this is caused when uh, you have too much of an offset of that decelerating piece 
from the wing nut. So if you're testing and you notice, you know, hey, my vehicle is going backwards. Well, that's because you have too much of an offset. So for the next run, decrease it by a rotation or two and see how it does. Another thing you want to look out for, uh, especially when you're testing at seven meters, is whether or not your vehicle is traveling in a large enough curve to cover the bucket. Now, I say that you know, it's really important to do this at seven meters because you're not going to be changing your curve in between runs. Uh, and the tightest curve you'll ever see for your vehicle will be at seven meters. So if your vehicle is able to clear the bucket at seven meters, then it most likely will clear the bucket at all their distances because those have a, a you're, you're aiming for those distances uh, would have the, the vehicle at a, you know, a greater angle uh, compared to what it would be at seven meters. So it, it is you know, more than likely that it's gonna cover the bucket at all those other meters if it covers it at seven. Now let's say you tested your vehicle and it ended up to the left of the target point. In order to correct this error, what you would be doing is you would just be changing the position of the aiming plot. So because our vehicle is to the left of the target point and we need it to be more to the right, we can move our aiming block uh, a couple more centimeters to the right of where it was previously and test it again and that should correct this issue. Now let's take the opposite scenario here. So our vehicle is to the right of the target distance. So again, what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be uh, shifting the aiming block in the direction we want the car to go uh, relative to that target point. So because our car is to the right of the target point and we want it to be more to the left on the next run, we can move our aiming block a couple centimeters to the left uh, from where it was previously to correct this issue. So let's say that your, your aiming was good but your vehicle was just too far behind the target point. To correct this issue, all you would need to do is just add rotations to that back axle. And each tick on that wheel dial corresponds to one extra centimeter of distance the vehicle will travel. So let's say that in this clip, uh, my, or in this image, my vehicle is five centimeters, uh, you know, five centimeters too far behind that target distance. So what I would do is when I'm doing my rotations, I would add five more ticks on that dial or five twenty-fourths of a rotation uh, to my back axle. And let's take the opposite scenario here. So our aiming was good, but our vehicle was just too far ahead of that target point. Uh, so this is caused when you have too many rotations on that back axle. And just like in the previous scenario, we can measure that distance. And let's say that again, this is five centimeters in front of our uh, target distance. So what we would be doing is we would be subtracting uh, 5 24ths or 5 ticks of that wheel dial uh, to achieve our actual intended target distance. And that is how you calibrate your Scrambler Champion kit. If you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments below or shoot us an email on our website. With that said, thank you for watching and stay unfazed.